Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is The Necromancer because I romance necks. Mm-hmm. Today we're going to be cleaning the house of someone who doesn't have the messiest house I've ever cleaned, but they do have hoarding disorder. Their hoard revolves around food, as you can see in the background here in a minute, uh, Diet Dr. Pepper. The ones on the left are not the only ones. There's some more to the right of the screen. And then there is three more cases that you can't quite see behind that little island thing. There's just an absolute ton of them. She also appears to have a problem with clothing, craft supplies, which we see a lot here on the channel. And she also has the worst case of medication hoarding I've ever seen. Now, the house is mainly just it's too small of a place for as many things as she has. And the food hoarding... That that she has in here is, is fairly severe. I found many, many bags of sugar. Of course, we've already talked about the Dr. Pepper, uh, canned goods. Uh, the refrigerator and the freezer is jam-packed. Um, I have a check coming up from YouTube that's fairly decent, and I'm considering making her an offer where if she gets rid of 100% of the food out of her refrigerator and freezer and starts from scratch, I will buy her a new fridge, a brand new fridge. But I, I have to see what that check's going to look like and I don't know that she'd even take that deal. Um, she is going to therapy on Monday. So I was really, really happy to hear that because this level of hoarding doesn't just go away. It, it really does take therapy to get past and to learn how to get past the urge of buying in bulk, which she buys everything in bulk. Now, it's important to note right off the bat that this house is not going to look perfect. In fact, this is just step one. This whole video is is just step one in a much larger cleaning process. The very first step is to get rid of the clutter and the trash and to get it sanitary enough to live to where we don't have to worry about any toxins or mold or bacteria. But there's going to be a lot of stains that don't come out of things like the cabinets and countertops. There's a lot of this house that is broken and needs repaired pretty badly. And so we're going to make this as good as we can get it in as short amount of time as possible so she can get back in here and live without that stress over her and also live in a, a way that's comfortable and safe. So the way I think of it is if I see someone who's drowning, my first reaction is not going to be to throw them a towel and say, hey, you're wet, dry off. It's going to be to get them out of the water. And so that's what we're doing here. Step one is getting her out of the water. We'll worry about throwing her a towel later. My process on this one is a little bit different than how I normally start. Normally, I pick like one section of a countertop and I clear that off and get it clean and then I make a station where I can put all my cleaning supplies. However, there's two problems with this kitchen. One, it's small. And two, it's so jam-packed with stuff that I can barely walk around in here. You'll see me as I'm going back and forth having to constantly step over things and try to keep my balance. And my strides are really long. I'm six foot four. And so I couldn't imagine being shorter than that with smaller legs and trying to get around these heaps of things in here. There was a really bad smell coming from the center of the room and I found out later it was liquefied onions that had gone bad. They said that the night before they actually did some cleaning in here and found some old rotten potatoes that were making it even worse. But anyway, back to the, the starting point. The starting point on this for me is going to be to clear out as much of the floor as possible just to give myself a path to walk through. And that's one of the reasons that I'm going to clean this island here in a minute is because if I clean the island, the little roly chef table thing, then I can use that to put some of the food on, like the canned goods, and at least that gives me an area to walk. And whenever I jump into cleaning this thing, it is really, really bad. It's rusty. Um, there's some stuff that looks like dirt on one corner. I think that was actually like a 
powdered basil or something like that. But the the rust is not going to come out and I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to get it out. I'm not going to use CLR. I'm not going to use a chemical that can take the rust off. This thing is shot and we can just get her a new one. But for right now, I need it in order to store some of the canned goods so that I can make some space in this room. So all I'm going to do is clean that off with Mr. Clean and a scouring pad just to get the bulk of the dirt off. I don't care about the rust. Then I'm going to put those little padding type things that she had back on there. Not a big fan of that because they're not clean, but they're clean enough to hold canned goods. So I'm going to put them back on there for now. Again, we're just pulling her out of the water. We can worry about getting something prettier and nicer and less rusty in there later. Once I have that cleaned, I'm going to start moving things out from sections of floor at a time. There's no way for me to take all this stuff off the floor and put it in another room and then sweep and mop the whole floor because there's way too much stuff to do that. So all I can do here is basically grid off this floor into sections and then I'll say I'll clean this little three foot by five foot rectangle and then put everything back and then move on to the next three by five rectangle and just continue doing that. Now, the problem is, you see that rack is there. I can't move that. It's kind of built into the hood of the stove, and it's it's not movable. I actually tried to lift it and get it out of the way. So in order to get all this nasty stuff off the floor, I'm going to have to clean it by hand. So I just soaked the whole thing down with Mr. Clean's Clean Freak, which is really good at getting out like grease, and that's what the majority of this is grease. And then I'm going to dry that up with a, a regular rag, and I'm just going to keep doing that process over and over until it's clean. Now, Clean Freak will actually say right on the bottle that it's not to be used to sanitize. So I use my APC, which stands for All Purpose Cleaner. You'll hear me talk about this in every video, but in every video, if I don't say how it's made, somebody always asks me how it's made. <laughs> so it's made with 70% isopropyl alcohol and about five or six drops of Dawn dish soap. And that is powerful enough to sanitize. So what I'm doing is I'm taking her pots and pans that are on this rack and the ones that have not been used, I'm still going to use APC to sanitize them because I don't know if bugs have been on them or mice or whatever. And I'm going to jump up and get the top rack. Now, normally I do that from the top down, but the way I had to clean this made me kind of go in reverse. I'd just been doing this long enough to where I can wipe that down without getting crumbs all over the stuff below it. You won't be that good at doing that because you're not this, baby. You ain't all this. But I am this, and so I did it that way. And you can trust me on that. That's a fact. That is a fact, son. Now, so she's got a few things in here that really don't need to be in there. One is she had that pizza thing, which fine, that I can I can handle that. But she's also got a little ice maker to the side of that, and it's unplugged and not being used. That really needs to go. If she can learn to control the food storage in the freezer, then she would not have a need for that. And she could just let the freezer make ice. But the freezer is so packed right now, it's just not going to happen. I, I understand why it's there, but still it's unused. She also has a thing across the kitchen, directly across from the ice maker, that is like a portable dishwasher, but it's really tiny and it's hooked directly into the faucet of her sink. And it made everything everything really awkward and hard to do dishes and really you can't do many dishes in that to begin with like the only thing she had in there were cups and I'd really like to see that thing gone because there's no need for that little portable dishwasher beside the stove this is one of those those areas that I was telling you about where the stains aren't going to come out I'm going to use Mr. Clean's Clean Freak and then sanitize it with my APC
If you're wondering what's in the jars, that is grease, collected grease. Um, it's a big thing in the South. We either pour grease into those bottles and dispose of the bottles, or we actually use the bacon grease for cooking. She also has like this glass vase that has all of her like spoons, her big dipping spoons and spatulas, but it's covered in grease too. Now, the, the actual spoons and spatulas were fine, but you can just tell that this thing's been around forever and hasn't been cleaned in ages. So I cleaned it with Clean Freak first to get the grease and grime off. Then I APC'd it inside and out in order to shine it up and to make sure it was sanitized. After I'm done with that, I'm going to take off the burners and I'm going to soak the top of the stove down with Clean Freak. Now, normally you would see me using oven cleaner here, but the thing is this stove actually wasn't that dirty compared to all the other ones that I do. So I just soak that down and then I'm going to use a razor scraper to get off all the majority of the burnt on food. Then I will use APC on a final pass and a scouring pad to get the, the last of the stubborn stuff off. Also, I apologize in advance if I play the background sounds while I'm not near Narrating, that refrigerator makes a horrible sound and then you add in the central air noises on top of that and it sounds like a really messed up episode of Doctor Who. My biggest challenge right now is that the lady who owns the house is just now confronting the trauma that led to the hoarding in therapy. So her first session is not until the beginning of next week. So she's not ready to just let me go through here and tornado this house and get rid of 75% of everything she owns. And really, at some point when she reaches that point in therapy to where she's comfortable doing that without experiencing even more trauma, she is going to have to get rid of about 75% of everything she owns because the house is not set up to store it. And the food by itself, there's just way too much. And we'll get into all that later. I mean, we've already talked about some of it. So anyway, the challenge for this house is going to be for me to only throw away what's truly genuinely trash. So empty boxes, bad food, and actual garbage. Everything else we're going to keep. So the challenge becomes finding a way to make all this fit that's out of the way, that's not a tripping hazard, that's not a fire hazard, and is not inviting mice and roaches to come in and devour what she's got because she's already got or she had an infestation. I didn't see any live bugs around. I didn't see any live or dead mice, but she definitely has a massive amount of bug spray and mouse traps and roach traps. So she's had that before. And I mean, I can see why because the food's all out in the open and there's stuff all over the counters and it's just an invitation for those pests to come in. It looks like they've gotten rid of them, so that's a really good upside. Now, the other part of the challenge is organization. So right now, since we're only in step one, the main thing that I concerned myself with was just getting the food up off the floor, like I'd mentioned, but I didn't take the time to find expired food. I didn't take the time to, say, put all the corn together and all the beans together. I just stack things where I could fit them right now. And as we come back to this house, over time, I will pull everything out of the cabinets and the counters, get rid of all the expired food, and then actually organized all the canned goods into one cabinet and to make sure that all the corn is stacked together with corn and all the beans are stacked together with beans. <laughs> beans. Yeah, beans are pretty cool. <laughs> Settle down, Beavis. <laughs> I will get more into how I stacked and Tetris things whenever we get into the living room. That happens on day two, and that'll be in this video. Now, one thing that I get asked a lot, and I always forget to answer, is how much it costs me to clean these places, because it's not just a case of I show up and clean it, and then the lack of a charge is the only thing I'm eating, and it's not just the gas that I 
use to get back and forth because I this is about 33 miles from my house or so. I typically spend at least $100 whenever I'm cleaning just on materials, but that can actually go up quite a bit. So on this one, I spent close to about $300 because I used a ton of chemicals and I also ended up buying 14 large Rubbermaid tubs in order to put a bunch of her stuff in. If I have to get a dumpster for a house, you can tack on four to eight hundred dollars on top of that depending on how large the dumpster is i'll be doing that on a house here within the next couple of weeks because we're going to clean out a massive garage or the garage is not massive but the stuff inside it there's a lot of stuff a massive amount of stuff a massive giant enormous amount of small stuff Once I've got that floor cleaned by hand, then I can start basically moving large piles of stuff from one section of the floor to another section of the floor. Then I'll clean that little section that I uncovered and then start shifting things back around again. Have you ever seen those little puzzle games that they form a picture and they're done kind of like in a tic-tac-toe type of grid and the goal is to shift the little squares around until they make a picture you got to move one and then move another one into its place because there's like one little hole that's open on the the little puzzle board cleaning a, a kitchen like this is just like that little puzzle thing we have to make an open space in order to clean that section then we have to shift everything into the newly cleaned section in order to uncover dirtier floor and we just keep doing that shifting things around and cleaning until the whole floor is done. Now another thing to keep in mind on a house like this, I normally say, and I've said this in several videos, to work 50 minutes and take a 10 minute break. That way it rounds out your full hour and you're getting a 10 minute break once per hour and it kind of resets your brain and gives you enough resting time, but not quite enough resting time to where you get too comfortable and don't want to get back up again. On this one, I take a break after about every 30 minutes because this is physically exhausting. There's a lot of lifting and a lot of moving in a place like this, and it's real easy to get burnt out and to get mentally overloaded, especially like I'm autistic, and so this is a lot for me to handle. Now, fortunately, it takes me roughly a half hour to clean a section. So whatever section I put myself on, by the time I get that settled to where I'm satisfied with it, roughly 30 minutes have passed. This kitchen took me six hours, and the living room also took six hours. When you see the bedroom in next week's video, it's really, really hoarded. So it may take me even longer to get the bedroom done. So I think what I may end up doing whenever I get into that room is doing a flat footed backflip into the room so that I land right in the middle and then just doing a whirlwind spin kick so that all the stuff shoots out of the middle of the room and embeds itself in the walls. That way I've got room to work and I can just pull stuff out of the walls as I need it and put it away one item at a time, one spin kicked item at a time. But we'll get to that whenever I get to that video. I've got to go back on Wednesday to do that. Now I did get really lucky and that I did find some shelving and some little of those plastic drawer thingies that I could put like snack food and beans. <laughs> Bean. I could put beans and rice into. And that at least gave me a little bit of wiggle room so I didn't have to try to cram all of her canned goods and stuff into a cabinet that was already overloaded.
Now the cabinet that I'll be working on here, it's hard to see because I had the camera in about the worst place ever because I'm an idiot. Idiot. But I pulled out a whole bunch of the food that she had in there because it was all knocked over and kind of just laying on top of each other. And I was able to Tetris that together in order to fit more food in there. So there was just enough room to stack two cans on top of each other. And the way she had it was there was a bunch of knocked over stuff and it was just taking up too much room. But that's just how I roll. I mean, they call me can stacking Johnny back in Salt Lake City. Like, yo, man, is that old can stacking Johnny? I don't know. Let's throw some cans at him and see what he does. I bet he stacks them. Now there's a little wire frame looking deal off to your left and that was fairly empty so I lucked out there too. It was mainly used to hold just kind of random items that she had laying around. So I ended up using that to stack a whole bunch of her cans and crackers and cereal and it just so happened that by the time I was done stacking all this stuff up, I ran out of room with the very last can. Had she had even one more can of food, I would have had no place to put it. But that's why they call me Exact Can Johnny. It's like no matter what house I go into, I know exactly how many cans I can and I can't. This is also, you can't see it because it's off camera, but this is also where I started putting a whole bunch of stuff on that little rolling island chef thingy, rust thing is what they call it. And you'll be able to see here, I used Mr. Clean on this little cabinet and it was able to get the grime and the dirt off. But again, there's so many stains that you'd pretty much have to repaint it. I'm mean, not even a magic eraser can get rid of a lot of the stains that are on there. But again, we're, we're not throwing her a towel, we're pulling her out of the water. Dishes were a nightmare. She's way overloaded with the amount of dishes that she has. Uh, one of the cabinets is nothing but Tupperware. One cabinet is nothing but plates. One is nothing but cups. And there's there's just no room for anything else. She also has like a an open face cabinet that was by where her cans were. And that thing is overloaded with plates, plastic plates and plastic bowls. And then she also has paper plates on top of that. And you'll see here in a minute when I start moving these dishes out, I thought that she didn't have hardly any silverware, but I just assumed it was because she lives alone. So she doesn't need a whole bunch of silverware. But no, that sink is almost entirely filled to the top with dozens and dozens of pieces of silverware. More silverware than I've ever seen in any house. You can also see where the dishwasher is hooked up to the faucet and I didn't want to take that off just in case she had plumbing problems or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I want to clean. Those are fruit fly casings. That's where they hatched out. So I'm going to use Mr. Clean to clean off all the grime. And then I want to use my APC to sanitize it. I want to do that before I even take the dishes out of there because we're going to have to do this one little section at a time. There's no room to put anything else. So we have to do just like we did the floor. Clean or move, then clean then move, then clean, and just keep shuffling until it's all cleaned. You can see the cabinet doors are completely waterlogged and shot. They're completely destroyed. Uh, one of them's hanging off. Really, if I had the time and the money to do it, I would actually 
tear out almost everything in this little section and rebuild it. And the smell on this sink was pretty bad. So I want to pull everything out. Notice how much silverware I took out of there. And then I want to use Barkeeper's Friend and scrub that sink right in its face. I'm going to scrub it in the face and say, do you like that? And the sink is all like, I do like that. Thank you for scrubbing me with the Barkeeper's Friend. Mm-hmm. I'll get one side of that done. I'll rinse all that out and wipe it down. And then I will take all the dishes that I had put in the other side of the sink, run dishwater. And then once those dishes are out of that section of the sink, then I can clean the newly evacuated sink. <laughs> There's so much moving and shuffling that goes on here. This is also one of the reasons why it was so hard to do dishes. Since the faucet had that thing attached to it, I had to use the spray nozzle to run dishwater. And that just makes it take forever. Yeah, check out the sink on the right. It's all silverware. Once she has enough therapy under her belt and she decides to start cutting things down, uh, the amount of dishes is one of the things that would really dramatically help her out. I mean, genuinely, she should go down to like five forks, five spoons, five butter knives, like living alone. That gives her, you know, a couple days to, to eat and not have to worry about doing 18 million forks all in one setting. blast through these dishes like they stole something. All right, after dishes, we finally have all the stuff off the floor so I can finally sweep the whole thing and then mop it. Because even after doing it by hand, we really need to get like a, a sanitizing mop juice on there. So I'm using Lysol. Not now, right now I'm just sweeping. You don't sweep with Lysol, you silly, you big silly face. But I'll sweep all this stuff up and then I'm going to mop it with Lysol. And then I think that's pretty much the end of the first day. And then once we come back in here in a second, we will go into the living room and start day two. Oh yeah, when I was mopping, I accidentally opened a portal to heaven, which is what's on that floor. Angels were mad, dude. They're like, I was in heaven and now I'm in a random kitchen. I am not the angel of kitchens. I'm the angel of perfect can stacking. And I'm like, nope, that's me, son. Get on out of here. Here's a before and after on the kitchen. Because this video is so long, I'll give you... I mean, look how cluttered that still is. It's It looks way better than it did, but that's still just way overloaded with stuff. But at least now she can walk around in there and not have to worry about getting sick. Now, the living room was tough to find a starting point. Uh, the first thing I did, I usually start with trash, and that's kind of what I started to do here. But every time I picked up a piece of trash, I found more dishes. And so I was running back and forth 
forth from this room to the kitchen and putting dishes in the sink. And then I ended up finding a bunch of styrofoam cups, which I just thought of initially, I'll just throw those in the trash can, but they were full. And I didn't know that like soft drinks like that could have a bad smell to them when they went bad, but those really smelled bad. Now she had these little colorful tubs, which were really nice for small collections of items. But I ended up buying 14 large tubs, which you'll see those start to come out here in a minute. And I used every single one of them. And in fact, I probably could have gone through another five, but I made 14 work. But this stuff in the living room, they, they had already gone through and cleaned this to get it into this condition. And that happens a lot whenever I do these free cleanings or people are embarrassed. They think that I haven't seen anything comparable to their house and they just want to try to get some semblance of cleaning done before I get in there. And I understand it. If I was in the same position, I would do the same thing. But that left a lot of, it was a, a weird combination of stuff. So like important papers and mail, a bunch of trash, some old food, and a ton of technology just kind of all mixed together. Now I didn't throw away any mail. Even if it was junk mail, I kept it. The only thing I threw away were newspapers because because it's really common for hoarded households to have a ton of those and there's no need. In this room, I found 10 tablets and like four phones. I found a buried laptop. Uh, she also collects uh, tools and hardware. So there were just a ton of drill bits and screwdrivers and measuring tapes, just a ton of it. I've, I've pretty much filled an entire tub full of nothing but tools and hardware. Lots of gardening stuff too. Now's when I start to realize how bad the medication hoarding was. So I was initially putting medication in that little red tub and then I picked up two paper bags that were completely filled with medication and realized that I wasn't going to be fitting that into any small tubs. So I got out the large tub and started filling it and I ended up filling that over the top with medication and there were still I think three of the small tubs completely filled with medication as well. I have kind of a general rule of thumb that I go by whenever I'm trying to get myself kick-started into doing a really cluttered room. And that is typically just move something. Move anything, anywhere. Take something and move it from a table to a floor or a chair. Just get it in motion. For some reason, that kick-starts like a different mode in your brain. It kind of jump-starts you and you start thinking a different way once you start putting an object in motion. It's kind of like if you're staring at a canvas for a really long time and you're not sure what you want to paint, sometimes they tell you to just make a mark and then just let yourself go from there. Just making that first mark can make all the difference in the world. And I'm kind of the same way with cleaning a room. Once I started moving things off of that little drafting table, all of a sudden my brain shifted gears and then I started moving other things and then my brain was like, okay, we'll just clear off this whole table and wipe it down and then we can use that as a kind of staging ground or a temporary area to store other items while we're waiting to find a location. Then after I did that, I kind of shifted my focus from the table to the floor and then I was like, okay, well a whole bunch of this stuff down here is trash, so that's easy. I'll just be able to go through that and throw everything away and and then keep the items that are good. And then it's just kind of like uh, you just keep bouncing and bouncing from one area to the next and just let your brain take over and it'll just point your hands where they need to go.
I went through about 50 pairs of gloves in this house too. Normally, you guys always give me crap because I hardly ever wear gloves, but this house had a lot of stuff that I wasn't comfortable with, mainly in the kitchen. Now, see, this room wasn't as bad. There wasn't like a filth or anything, but there was a lot of cigarette ashes. She's a smoker, as you could probably tell if you were looking around the room when I was doing the kitchen. She had uh, hoarded cartons of cigarettes. And so all of her tables and chairs and floors, they all had like a coating of ash on them. Now, I'm not afraid of ashes. I used to be a smoker years ago. I've, I've quit for a long time. But I also know that the more I touch that with my fingers, the blacker my fingertips are going to get because there was just so much of it. And then whenever I thought about that for too long, my brain was like, bleh, bleh. so I gloved it up, son. Got my glove on. That's why they call me glove putting on Johnny back in Reno. Yo, man, is that old glove putting on Johnny? I don't know, man. Drop some gloves on the ground and see what he does. I bet he puts them on. I really can't wait to give this room a second pass because even after we got rid of or didn't get rid of, we, we got rid of like three or four bags of trash, 40 gallon contractor bags, but then we packed all the rest away in tubs. So even after we packed all the stuff away in and tubs and put it behind the chairs, it was still so cluttered. Again, just like the kitchen, it's way better than what it was. But the cleaner in me and the organizer in me really wants to do way more. And we we likely will do way more. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to get that bedroom done. There's actually two bedrooms and then the bathroom. And then we can hopefully clear out her hallway because she's got a rack of clothes that makes it almost impossible to walk through there. And then after that, she was considering hiring us for bi-weekly, I think. And if that's the case, then that gives us all the time in the world to be able to pick out one room and say, okay, we'll clean the whole house, but today this room is our project room. And today we're going to pull all the stuff off the top of your fridge and all the canned goods out, and we're going to reorganize all this stuff. And then the next week we can say, all right, we're going to pull all of your clothes off of these racks and figure out a better way to hang these up and see if we can't get rid of anything that you don't wear, donated or whatever. And just do that each time we come back until the house is the way she wants it and in a way that makes her lose all the stress that comes with sitting in a house that's this chaotic. It was so hot in this house, even with the central air turned on. The Midwest is getting hit by a really like ultra heavy humidity right now. And so the temperature was like 86 to 88, somewhere in that area. But the humidity made it so bad that you step outside for even a second and you're just drenched in sweat. It feels like you're walking in a big vat of stew. And it was even like that inside this house, even with the air conditioning on. Strangely, the tubs help with organizing, but not in a way that you'd think. It's not just because you can put stuff in them and stack things up easier. It's because when you have a bunch of them, it forces you to, to decide what goes in each of them. So for instance, she had a bunch of new clothes and new shoes. So I knew that I could use one tub to put all the new stuff in, the new clothing and new shoes. I also noticed she had some games. And so one tub could be dedicated to nothing but games. Same thing with uh, tools and hardware. And then I could use one tub for her dirty clothes. So each time I 
I found a pile of stuff that went with each other, I knew I could dedicate a tub to those things. And just the act of doing that forces you to mentally organize the room because now you're putting things mentally into categories. So even amongst all that chaos, it's forcing my brain to think about what goes where, even though it's still in just these random piles of mixed chaos. I think I found 10 lanterns in here. We filled about four or five tubs with nothing but craft supplies. I filled one tub full of Christmas stuff. I filled one of the mini tubs with nothing but cords. So charging cables, HDMI cords, USB cables. One tub was nothing but gardening stuff. So everything from seeds and bulbs to decoration to expanding soil. It's the kind of that are like, uh, comp they're compressed down into a block that almost feels like wood. But whenever you put water on it, it expands out and turns into regular garden soil. I found about, I'd say at least 10 pairs of glasses, if not 15. Maybe 10 pairs of scissors, tons of ink pens, and emery boards for like your nails. I probably found 30 or 40 of those, brand new, still in the packages. That actually happens a lot with hoarding houses, even for houses that don't buy in bulk. What happens is they buy whatever they need, then they lose it amongst the piles. And then they have to rebuy the thing that they now can't find. So whenever you end up cleaning it up, you end up finding a massive, crazy amount of stuff that's all the same. So that's when you run into like 40 emery boards. And I think I found four to six bones. I think she's got 10 to 12 salt shakers and another 10 to 12 pepper shakers. By the way, if you're watching this video, lady who I cleaned for, do not be embarrassed about this. This is something you couldn't control any more than you could control a broken leg. It needs time to heal. You're taking the right steps to heal. And it took a lot of courage to even reach out for help, to even let me come in here and do this. So you're doing the right thing. And I'm really happy that you're taking the steps that you need to take in order to get this addressed. Because this isn't just about your house. This is undealt with trauma. And once you're able to confront that and talk it out and have enough time to really, really confront it, you're going to find yourself in a happier place than you've been in many, many years. This is just the physical manifestation of that. This is just the physical house that we're dealing with here. Being embarrassed about this would be the same as being embarrassed because you have the flu. Anyway, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're getting therapy and I'll help you in any way I can. Also, I threw one of your bags of candy away because I accidentally stepped on it and squished it. Sorry, I'll bring you more candy. Oh, I've also reached cord Narnia here. Every time I reach down, I found another cord, another cable. So I just wind it up, throw it in the tub, reach down, found another, and just kept doing that. But every time I found another one, the pile that was beside the table kept getting thinner and thinner, and it finally looked manageable. So I'm glad I was finding cords that didn't plug into anything.
and notice the sweat on my back. That is some back sweating right there, son. I ended up doing the same thing on this floor as I did on the kitchen, where I could move some stuff out of the way and vacuum, then move some other stuff out of the way and vacuum that. I just had to do it all in sections. Now, the good thing is, once you clean a room so much to where you finally have an open floor, then you can go over the whole thing again and do it all in one big swipe and do like a big final vacuum, the same way I did the sweeping and mopping in the kitchen. But before that, it's really important to like vacuum as you go in an overcluttered house like this because otherwise you're going to be tracking dirt everywhere and you may not be able to access that area again once you start moving things around. One big thing about this, there were hundreds of pills on the floor that have been spilt over time and all different types. And I, there's no way for me to pick those up one by one. There, it was seriously like 100, if not 200 pills everywhere. So I was forced to vacuum those up. And once they mix with the dirt, I can't separate those out. I'm not taking my vacuum cleaner into a pharmacy to dispose of those. So I just dumped that out into the regular trash. But I also kept giggling, thinking of a cop pulling me over on the way home and then opening up <laughs> the vacuum canister and thinking that I had found some ingenious way to smuggle drugs. Once I start moving whole tubs, like filled tubs, then I know I'm making major progress. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm getting kind of all the medication consolidated into bigger piles. So the big giant tub plus the mini tub. And once I start doing that, that's when I, I get into big picture organization. Even after all that, I turned the camera around and bam, that gigantic pile that needs to be sorted. Now, here's the other thing. Every item goes through my hands. We're not using a shovel. We're not taking big armfuls of stuff and throwing it in the trash. Every item in here has some sort of value to her. So all we're doing is organizing the stuff that she's got into groups. And then anything that's obvious trash we'll get rid of, fine. But we are not going to do the thing where people are like, I'd have just burned the whole thing down or I'd have just grabbed a shovel. And no, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have done any of that. One, you wouldn't have cleaned the house at all. And two, if you just went in here with a shovel and started pitching everything, you're not helping her out whatsoever. You're actually causing her more stress than what she already has, and then the hoarding can actually intensify. Once I got down so far in this pile that's off to the right, I found a whole console to a car underneath there. It's got a whole bunch of change and stuff in it, which I think she's got like four gigantic change jars that are really filled up full. So I just added to that or actually started her a, a new change jar. Kind of interested about how much she's got in change. I'd love to take that into a bank and cash it all in and see how much is there. I bet it's more than four. I bet it's more than four money. This area was actually way easier to do than the rest because this was a bunch of like bought items. So she had big piles of gardening stuff and then she had little piles of clothes. So it was a lot easier to organize. Whereas on the other part, like the other half of the living room, that was all 
stuff that she used on the daily and like a lot of ashtrays and random stuff that was used. Whereas this, you can tell she went to the store and she bought a bunch of gardening supplies and then sat it down on the ground and that's where it stayed. So it, it was super easy to just pick that up and stick it in a tub. I should have gardened it all. Just went outside and gardened. She'd have come home and said, where's all my gardening stuff? And I'd been like, I gardened it. I made a garden. Man, that's some impressive back sweat. I always wondered why they called me Back Sweat Johnny back in Buffalo. This may sound like a simple, weird, nothing piece of advice, but if you're ever doing a house like this that's really cluttered or straight up hoarded, don't open one trash bag at a time. Actually open like two or three of them and put them in different sections of the room because you know you're going to fill at least three or four by the time you're done cleaning. So if you throw like say three trash bags in the three main corners of the room, you can easily reach the trash bag to throw things away without having to traipse back across the room because you forgot one over and over again. Also, no matter which side I try to open a trash bag on, it's the wrong side every time. It's like putting in a USB cable into your USB slot. No matter what way you try it, it's upside down. I'm like that with trash bag. I also get asked a lot, do I recycle? Sometimes. If they've got recycling bins, I'll use them. I always try to when I can, but if I'm spending six hours cleaning a living room and I'm back sweating it up and I'm exhausted and I'm going through six thousand individual pieces of just stuff. I know I'm probably not going to take the time to break down and recycle eight cardboard boxes. Now I did recycle the aluminum cans. She actually collects aluminum cans. So I did put the majority of those into the aluminum bin. Some of them I threw away, but that's typically the ones that I threw away had like bug larva on it. I wish I would have had the camera in a better spot because I had to get all the way underneath that bed in order to get all the stuff out. I had sweat rolling off of my big old stupid face head and my long lanky body was jutting out in the weirdest position. And all I could do was take my arm and make like a, a scythe out of it and just rake it all back. <laughs> so I had was like hitting myself in the face with picture frames and then I was just chucking stuff over my shoulder just to get it out of my face. Now, believe it or not, we're actually actually winding down here. It looks like there's a ton of stuff and there is, but a lot of this is just tubs that are already packed up. I'm just capping them all off and getting them full enough to be able to put a lid onto them. And then once I've got that, I can I start moving those behind the chairs because it's out of the way and it's slightly hidden. It's not all the way hidden, but it's an, it's hidden just enough to where at least it's not a huge eyesore. But I, in any way, the point is once I start moving those tubs, that takes up like a third of the screen right now. So we'll start to see bare floor here shortly. While you're watching me do that, if you didn't know, we have a members only section. It's only for people who want to show a little bit of extra support financially to the channel. I give an extra video every Wednesday and then I usually do some extra 
extra posts and stuff like that throughout the week when I can. If you're expecting to see full-blown cleaning videos in there, don't pay the extra money for membership. It's just me goofing off, sometimes just talking about my life, sometimes just cleaning up my own house. Sometimes I will do a full cleaning video, but it, it's rare. Usually it's just me and my son and daughter and Daniel acting stupid on camera. Sometimes I talk about important stuff and sometimes I just go shopping with Jason. If you don't know who any of those names are, I probably wouldn't pay for membership because I'd say that you don't know the channel well enough yet to even get anything out of the membership area. Also, we have brand new t-shirts up too. I'll put a link to both of those things, the membership area and the merchandise shop in the description so that it's easier to find because sometimes it's hard to find the join button for the members area. And if you don't want t-shirts with the logos and stuff like the, the one that I'm wearing here, the filth shirt. You can also put those on coffee mugs and stickers and tote bags and all kinds of stuff. It's not just strictly t-shirts. It's one of those shops where you can just take the image that you like and tell it what to put that image on. For instance, I have one on my butt. I bought a T Public butt with Jason's face on it. Oh shoot, I totally forgot. Um, so the people over on TikTok... If you didn't know, my TikTok kind of blew up. In fact, it's set to outpace YouTube numbers very soon. Last I checked, it had 175,000 followers. And that's just in like a couple months of being around on TikTok. But anyway, every time I post a cleaning video over there, people start tagging Mr. Clean. So Mr. Clean eventually followed my account and then they sent me a whole bunch of stuff. So I will probably for the member section, I'll be unboxing all the stuff that they sent. Or I suppose I should actually do that on TikTok and just a regular video since it was the TikTok account that did it. <laughs> It'd be kind of jerky for me to just say, I'm going to do an unboxing now, but I'm not going to put it in a place where Mr. Clean can benefit at all from it. <laughs> But if you haven't followed the TikTok thingy, there's a link to that on my, I think on the about page or something. I don't know, man. I'm not looking it up. That's how I roll, son. Call me no looking up Johnny. They call me look down Johnny. All right, we're winding down now. I'm taking all the consolidated stuff that was on the drafting table and on that little end table, and I'll switch the camera here in just a second so you can get a better view of that. And now I'm not really trying to decorate here because, again, there's too much stuff and there's nowhere for me to put it, so I end up having to just clutter it all together. But once we start moving things around and opening up more space in the other bedrooms, then I can take more of the stuff out and actually make it look pretty pretty. But right now it's just a struggle to even find a place to put everything. Oh yeah, I found like, uh, I don't know, five sets of keys. A couple of them were car keys. Other ones were just like big rings of keys. So hopefully if she was looking for some keys, those are the ones we found. Anyway, yeah, check out the new merchandise, even if you don't buy any of it, because you'll get a laugh out of at least one of the new ones that we just put up. And then uh, members, I will see you on Wednesday. Everybody else, I'll see you next Saturday. Later.